good afternoon. Today is July 25th, 2015. My name is Nancy Uphoff. I am conducting an oral history interview of John Heinzelman. John Heinzelman at the Leroy American Legion, Post 79 in Leroy, Illinois. Uh, please state your name and address for the record. I'm John Heinzelman, and I'm from uh, Paxton, Illinois. And what is your address? 2172 East State Route 9 in Paxton. Which war did you serve in? Vietnam. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. What was your age? When I enlisted, I had just turned 18. Where were you living at the time? At home in, in Pennsylvania. Were you single or married? Single. Why did you join? Well, I was close to being drafted, and uh, I don't know, I was walking past the Air Force recruiter station and I saw that uniform and I said, I need a new suit, so I'm going to get one. Why did you pick, and you just told me why you picked that branch of the service. Yes, because I, I just happened to be by the Air Force mm -hmm. recruiter and he had a pretty good deal, I thought. Uh -huh. Do you recall your first days in the service? Oh yes. Um, going from a small town, uh, rural area to Texas and people yelling in your ears, telling you what to do, it, that was uh, quite a change from what I was used to. What did it feel like? Uh, well, it's kind of scary at first until I got used to it. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your boot camp training experiences. Like I say, it was all new to me. I was used to you know, just walking around, enjoying myself, swinging my arms and whatever, and you had to walk in a straight line and, and, and step with everybody else. And uh, being in a new area, I was I like to look around, and that didn't work either because it it caused me some difficulty. Mm -hmm. And where was your boot camp? At Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Um, did you get to go home on leave after boot camp, or did you go straight to your first assignment? I went straight to. Uh, uh, Tech School, which was the Chinook Air Force Base in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your instructors? Well, I can't remember the names right now, but I can almost see their faces, mm -hmm. some of them. That, uh, because I went back, there was an instructor about uh, four years later, a lot of them were still there, mm -hmm. especially the civilian instructors. Uh, I had a real good friend, his name was Ed Coble, and uh, so I definitely remember him. Um, how did you get through your basic training? And I, I know it's difficult, but how did you, what kept you going? Well, it was new and, and there, was, there was promise of something ahead, and I was kind of anxious to get out and see what else was in the world. I, mean, I hadn't been outside of, well, I, I grew up in Pennsylvania and I went, in, went to New York and New Jersey, but that was about it. But I wanted to see more country. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, kind of kept me going. And actually, once you get into the groove and you know where your lines are, it's, it's pretty easy to mm -hmm. make it through. When you enlisted, did you um, 
figure you'd probably be going to Vietnam? Well, I knew that if I stayed, uh, if I went somewhere where I'd only be there for like a year, then I would probably end up there. But I went right overseas, so then it, it didn't bother me because I was on a three-year tour mm -hmm. to uh, Europe. So. Did you have any special buddies in boot camp? Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of names right now, but yeah, there mm -hmm. were guys that I kind of stuck with, helped them out, and they helped me out. Mm -hmm. The next part is, is your experiences. Um, which war did you serve in? Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And do you remember exactly where you went in Vietnam? Uh, I was assigned to the name. Uh, I had a friend that was at Tung Sanu, so he kind of pulled me in and tried to get me assigned there, mm -hmm. and that didn't work. So I went up, went up to the Nang, and uh, when I got there, I found out my unit had already been uh, moved back to the States. So I didn't have an assignment there, and I ended up going to Udo in Thailand from mm -hmm. there and to finish out my career. Do you remember arriving and what it was like when you arrived? Oh yes. When I landed at Da Nang, I came in on a C-130, they opened the back doors, we walked off the ramp to the airport and there wasn't a soul there. So I found a telephone and called the security police and said, hey, I need a place to sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. And so they brought me over and said, there's the dormitory. Pick the room you want. And that was because you weren't assigned, your your company had already left? Uh, yes, there was nobody there to, to receive me uh -huh. because they were all gone. So how long was it before you had a job to do? Well, uh, I was there probably in the area of three weeks and I went to personnel every day and try and find out where I was supposed to be. And they never could come up with an answer. And one day I came in and the desk there was a whole stack of dusty orders on it. And I started digging through them and I found mine that were like uh, six months old. And they never, they never got them to me, uh -huh. telling me that I was supposed to go to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was never supposed to go to the name. They changed it. So what did you end up, what was your job that you ended up doing? Well, when I went to uh, Udorn, I was a uh, supervisor of the night uh, shift. Uh, we did uh, pick up and delivery of uh, uh, equipment mm -hmm. to the aircraft, servicing equipment to the aircraft, uh, support equipment. Mm -hmm. and so I had um, about 20 guys that were out there huff hustling all night. And they, we also drove vans that took the specialists out to the aircraft. If somebody needed to work on electrical, they'd take the electrician out or cheap little guys or you know, whatever. Now, they for the aircraft, was it just airplanes or were there helicopters too? We had all uh, airplanes, we had all fighters, so mm -hmm. at fours. Did you ever see any combat? No. Were, well, since you were a support person then, did you, um, were there many casualties in your unit or were you kind of away from all of that? In Thailand, no, there weren't any casualties, mm -hmm. but the short time I was at the Nang, uh, there were probably uh, a dozen guys that got killed, mm -hmm. mostly uh, because the Somebody sent a mortar in there, and the Vietnamese weren't very good at lining things up, but they would hit, you know, like the one guy got killed, he was uh, free flight in his airplane, mm -hmm. and to take off, and he was sitting in the cockpit and came in that way. Um, tell me about a couple of your most memorable experiences over there. Uh, 
Um, it, you know, uh, one of the things about the Southeast Asia area was that uh, I think the the people really took advantage of the military. Um, the in Thailand, they they would come in on the base and they would they would steal equipment. They would you know like we had uh, sixty foot cables and generator sets. They come in with a hacksaw, cut them off, throw them on their shoulder, and go. Uh, so and if you went downtown, you could drive by warehouses and they'd be full of Air Force equipment. Uh, you never got. I wasn't a smoker and I wasn't a drinker, but the guys that smoked never got the good cigarettes, they never got the good beer, mm -hmm. you know, they got the Paul staff and uh, maybe Chesterfield or something like mm -hmm. that, but you couldn't get Marlboro or Salem, you know, the good popular cigarettes. So they would steal them as they're coming up on the roads. They Did they put cigarettes in the mess kits or the meal? The C ration, rations? Yes. Uh, yes. You get a little box of maybe five in there or something. Mm -hmm. But they were pretty stale usually. <laughs> <laughs> what was the weather like? Hot, humid, rained every day. That's why I worked night shift. Uh -huh. And nothing was air conditioned. I slept in a, a dormitory that wasn't air conditioned. So mm -hmm. working nice was nice. Now when you were in Thailand, do you remember any of the guys that you worked with there? I had one good buddy, yes, mm -hmm. and I, I still remember him. Do you keep in contact with him at all? Uh, no. What, once, I mean, when he left there, when I, I left before he did, so I don't know where he went to after mm -hmm. that. How long were you over there all together? Um, total about 11 months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you were not a prisoner of, of war, correct? Mm -hmm. um, did you, were you awarded any medals or citations? Over there? No. Mm -hmm. How did you stay in touch with your family? That was really difficult, mostly by letter, because uh, telephones you had to go through, uh, oh, I can't remember what they're called now, uh, ham radio. Okay. So you had, uh, they would patch you into a ham radio operator and he would then patch you into uh, a local phone. Mm -hmm. And that was always limited, like five or ten minutes. And the only phone that I to go to, like if my wife called me, uh, I, they would have to come find me by the time I got there, time and time. So a lot of times I never even got to talk to her, but mm -hmm. I knew she was okay because she called me. That's good. What was the food like? Um, actually, it was pretty good. Uh, I, don't, I used to go out and get a nice water buffalo steak, and uh, they had the veggies and everything. So you ate more of the local food than Air Force yes, food? Well, most of the time I ate in the, in the dining halls, mm -hmm. but uh, once in a while I'd go out get a blood buffalo uh -huh. And were you pretty free to go out and about when you weren't on duty? Yes. Did you have plen well, plenty of supplies? Yes, we actually did. And I shared a lot with the Marines. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't? Because they didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, did you feel a lot of pressure or stress when you were over there? I did. Uh, <clears throat> mostly because the uh, most of the people that were over there, they, they didn't care. They were just over there having a good time. Since, like you said, we, we had freedom. A lot of them the guys lived downtown and had a girlfriend and or they ran the bars or whatever and that wasn't my forte. 
Um, so it was when guys wouldn't show up for work, that was very stressful, and that did happen. Mm -hmm. And nothing would ever happen. So you were married before you left for Thailand. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, was there something special that you did for good luck or like a, well, it just says for good luck? No, not really. Mm -hmm. um, I just had my faith and mm -hmm. believed that the Lord would take care of me. Mm -hmm. Did you have um, uh, comrades? That's kind of a, Did you have friends that were had similar beliefs to you that you could kind of depend on and talk with? No, not really. It's like my buddy worked day shift, so we came in between mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, how did people entertain themselves so in where you were stationed? Uh, well, the USO was there, and they had a real good facility. Uh, we had, you know, like Bob Hope came over and, mm -hmm. and uh, other uh, stars mm -hmm. would come. I can't remember any in particular, but they usually had a pretty good US show about once a month. Mm -hmm. And so, but a lot of the guys, like I said, they lived downtown and they, there was a lot of drinking going on. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much the thing to do over there, I guess. How did the uh, the people of Thailand treat you, the soldiers and the service people? They were. I didn't deal that much with them. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a time where I spent trying to further my career, so I I studied a lot mm -hmm. and the promotion and that sort of thing. But uh, you know the the people that I. We had uh, girls that did our laundry and did the housekeeping and everything like that. Uh, they were very, very good in, in the job. Mm -hmm. Were you ever? Were you granted leave occasionally? Yes, I actually took leave and came back to the states. Mm -hmm. uh, spent time with the family. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to come back? Go back? Oh yes. <laughs> That's kind of a silly question. Um, so what did you do when you're on leave? Well, uh, my wife and kids were in California, so uh, we just kind of hung out there, went to the beach and stuff like that. She, she was actually with her parents, so mm -hmm. uh, they kind of entertained us. So you really did have R&R? &R. Yeah. That's, that's good. Um, where did you travel while you were in the service? Well, I was stationed in Holland and then Germany. And while I was there, uh, we actually we traveled into uh, well, France. We spent quite a bit of time in France and uh, all the little countries there, Belgium, uh, Luxembourg. Did a lot of traveling within Germany. Mm -hmm. How old were your children when you were in overseas? Um, my first tour, I didn't have any. My wife was, in fact, I met my wife in Germany. But when I was in, in Vietnam and Thailand, uh, my baby was just three months when I left. And I had one that was. A little bit over a year old, and then my son was like three. Mm -hmm. But then uh, my last tour, I was in Germany, and the, the kids were all teenagers, and so we, we took them over there, and they got to enjoy what my wife and I enjoyed before we got married. Uh, do you recall any particularly humorous or unusual events? Well, the, later on in my career, like say when I was in, in Germany on my last tour, 
Um, we had a lot of friends, and we would go down to hunt and go to the, the uh, gas houses and, and eat and stuff like that. And I had two buddies that were, we were a little bit, we were supposed to be mature leaders, and uh, the child came out of us. So we did have some, some fun. Do you have many photographs of your time in the service? Especially your time in Thailand? Uh, I have some. I, I have a little bit from each place I've been. Mm -hmm. um, what did you think of your fellow officers, or fellow, the officers and fellow soldiers? Uh, I had a lot of real good uh, supervisors and uh, officers. Um, good people to work for and with, mm -hmm. uh, and of course you're going to run into that every once in a while, but for the most part, uh, I had a real good career. Mm -hmm. Did you keep a diary when you were in the service, especially in Thailand? No, I didn't. Do you wish you had? Yes, because there's probably a lot I've forgotten mm -hmm. that would have been uh, good to remember. How long were you in the service altogether? Uh, 21 and a half years. 21 and a half years. Do you remember the day you got out? The Actually, maybe the better question, do you remember when you got home from Thailand? Was that your most a stressful assignment? Uh, no, n not really. Actually, my last one was my most stressful one. Mm -hmm. But uh, because coming back from there, you know, I was uh, no, but I went right from there to, to another Air Force base, so I didn't get all the ridicule that a lot of the vets got. And actually, the people in where I grew up, uh, they were very receptive to mm -hmm. us, and uh, so I didn't have any problem with that. So how did you feel when you finally completely retired from the military? Uh, I kind of missed it. Uh, like I said, I, I had, it was a good career for the most part. And, uh, but I, went, I came back to this area where there was a lot of military, so I still kind of hung out with them too. Mm -hmm. so. So when you came back from the military, you came back to Central Illinois, yes. Paxton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you get home? Well, actually, uh, we, I flew in the South Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, Charleston, and rented a van and threw the family and goods in there and, and went to my in-laws mm -hmm. who were in Alabama. And stayed with them for a little while, and then came on home. Mm -hmm. um, especially as compared to Thailand. I mean, after being in Thailand, did you notice a big difference between the home United States before and after you were over there? Like attitude, or or just I'm not sure what all. Uh, no, like I said, when, when you go from, if you stay in the military and stay around the military people, you don't see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. After you uh, were out of the military, what did you do? Because you were still a relatively young man. Well, see, I had it made there. Because when I came home, uh, we came back. We had lived in Paxton, and then went to Germany. And so my wife had already been established with the job at the local hospital. So when she came back, they hired her right back. Mm -hmm. So she went to work within days, and I was retired, so I retired. And I became just a mom. Uh -huh. Were your children still at home? Yes. Or some of them, or all of them? All of them, they were still in school. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, then my wife saw that I was having too much fun, so she got me a job at the hospital. <laughs>
Uh, now, did you get any education after you came back, or was it all pretty much while you were in the service? I did most of my work while I was in, I got my education while I was in the service. Although, when I, after I retired, I enrolled in Eastern Illinois University uh, to uh, work on a Board of Governors degree. And when I went to work, I just never had the time to pursue it. Mm -hmm. so, that. so, could you have, you could have used the GI Bill then? Yes, that's what I would use. Mm -hmm. um, now, it sounded like you really don't keep in contact with anybody from the, your service years, or um, there's still a few that uh, I know where they're at, and if I get in that area, we'll. Not my mm -hmm. Are you a member of any veterans organizations? Sadly, no. Mm -hmm. um, so after you retired from the military, then you started working in the hospital? Yes. So, and that's what you did until you retired again? Or are you still working? I'm still working. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's mostly what I, uh, I've been in the hospital, nursing home, uh, retirement community mm -hmm. uh, maintenance. Okay. Did you, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Uh, yes, but I, I did have a military background in the family. My dad was in World War I mm -hmm. um, and I lost two uncles in World War II, and uh, so I, you know, I was, I was kind of military-minded, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it's formed my uh, way of thinking mm -hmm. on what happens, what's been happening today and in the past. Mm -hmm. um. Does your do you ever go to reunions? Uh, military reunions? Yes. No. Uh, that's something that Air Force doesn't isn't really big on. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I have never been to one. How did your service and experiences affect your life? Well. From what, before I went in to basic training, there was a big change. And uh, I think it brought a lot of, uh, well, it did bring a lot of discipline into my life. And uh, I think I do a lot of things the way we did it in the military. had a big impact on me. What similarities or differences do you see in your world as a veteran compared to that of those currently serving in the military? Oh, I, there, there's a lot of difference now. I mean, we were, it was pretty rigid when I was in. We knew where the boundaries were. Uh, my son was in the Air Force, and from the conversations we had while he was in, it had changed an awful lot. And he went in like uh, he, he was. He joined about two years after I retired, and he was in for uh, like ten years. He got out because it wasn't the Air Force that he knew was when he was growing. Mm -hmm. Was he deployed anywhere? Yes, he spent a lot of time in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And he was in bad health because of the Gulf. So sorry. Is there anything you would like to add that we haven't talked about already? Um, like you said, I said, the military was a, a good experience for me. I may have been in at the right time or whatever. Um, 
I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about other people and how to to uh, deal with them, manage them. Uh, I would never have stood up in front of people and talked before, but when I became a military instructor, which I did for 11 years, uh, it, it really changed me and now I can talk. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else that you can think of that um, positive or negative or any advice you'd have for somebody going into the military now? Uh, I believe that uh, everyone should do a couple of years at least in the military. Uh, from my own experience it shaped me and I think it will shape a lot of people. Uh, I fortunately, our, our school has a, a band director who is uh, who was an ex-Marine, now in the Air Force, in the band, but he's still serving. Uh, and he teaches those kids uh, to be adults, basically. And he uses music to do it. Uh, he's made some I don't remember how many years he said he's been there, but every year there's several graduates that pursue the military, mm -hmm. and they all can say, they, and they come back, he puts on a tribute every uh, uh, Memorial Day, or just before Memorial Day, for the vets, mm -hmm. and uh, if those kids are, can get away on leave or anything, they come in and and be a part of this program. Wonderful. So, I think it, it's really good. Um, it's not the same as it was, but not everything changes. So mm -hmm. we just got to take it as a kind. That's right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, and thank you for your service. You're quite welcome. Thank you for your service. If you could just hold on one minute, I have a couple of questions.